Hi, this is Swan with Swan Amity Studios, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Apple Pops. Now, this is a product that came out not too long ago, and the first time that I saw them on uh, a Facebook advertisement, I was a little concerned. I wasn't sure about trying them, but uh, since then, I have discovered that they are wonderfully easy, and look how simple they are. Uh, the design is great. Um, they come in this little bag. You'll get um, different sizes of the little Apple Pop templates. And when they come off their little storage ring, to choose the size of the applique circle that you want, you can choose one that is the size of the inside of the circle or the size of the outside of the circle. And then choose the uh, Apple Pop template that matches it. So if I want this size circle, the outside of it, I would choose the next size up. You can see how it fits around it really well. And if I wanted what was inside of that circle, I would choose the next size down. You can see how that fits inside there as well. And let's just take a look at a couple that I have in progress from my other little set over here. Some of the other things I want to have on hand, I'm using my Aliso Mini because I don't really need a, a larger iron. You can use your bigger iron if you want to. Nothing wrong with that, but this one is going to work just fine for today. And I have some starch over here, liquid starch, already mixed up. This is the same Stay Flow that I use for my other starch-based applique methods. And in this case, um, it is about one to one. So one part starch to one part water is what I've mixed it with. I have my little paintbrush, although you could put this in a little sprayer too. It wouldn't have to be brushed on. It could absolutely be sprayed on. And um, I have my trolley needle. I really like to have this on hand whenever I'm doing iron uh, work so that I can keep my fingers out of the way. And um, I'm using my Appliquick scissors, which I just really love how these function. So let's take a look. I have this little guy, and I would like to have it be this size. So I have the next size up to go with it. I have two of those out. I really like to do these two or three, maybe four at a time, so that I can just kind of work through the process and let things cool off because these are metal. When I heat them up with the iron, they are going to get quite hot. So I don't want to have the need to touch them right away again. So here I'm going to set my first little template up. Now you can be as fussy as you want to with it. And because you're going to put the other piece in on top of it, you may wish to flip your fabric over like I did there so that I can see what it's going to look like from the top. And then once I like it, I just go ahead and push down so that everything is kind of locked into that circle. It just tightens around it. Now, your Apple Pops come with instructions, but they're just so easy to use. So you, you probably won't even have to read the instructions. They're that easy. But once I have that ring on the top, we're locked into place like that. I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut all the way around and I'm not going to worry about being perfectly accurate. I'm just going to come right up to the edge of that top circle and trim away. So there is my piece. You can see how this isn't uniform trimming on the back side, but pretty close. And we have what looks like a generous quarter inch seam allowance or approximately a quarter inch because each one of these are approximately a quarter inch. So that works out perfectly. I'm gonna set that one down and take a look at the next one. This is a smaller scrap. I really like that you can pretty much lay your Apple Pop template on there and know that it's gonna work because it has enough space all the way around it. So I can just go ahead and set the other template on top and you see, you don't actually have to do it from the other side. You can do it from this side too, that's fine. And just push everything into place so it's flush with the other template. Now, you could say that's a little bit scant. Yes, it is, that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. It's still a pretty decent seam allowance. 
And I'm just going to trim that all the way off, all the way around as well. So we're going to do two at a time here. And I've got two ready to go. We leave them so that we can see the seam allowance. And I'm going to take my little paintbrush and my starch. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint the starch all the way around. Now remember I said you could absolutely use a spray bottle here too, so if you'd prefer to load your starch mixture into a spray bottle or you have a spray starch you think works really well with this, you can absolutely spray it right on there. There we go. Now we've painted the starch all the way around on both sides. I'm going to close my starch up and set my paintbrush aside. And I'm going to get my trolley needle out. And all we're going to do at this stage is put our trolley needle on one side. Now, you may call these trolley needles where you are. It tends to be a little regional. You might also call them finger stilettos. I think either one is a great name for it. And I like to wear mine so that that little banjo pick side is right in the meaty portion of the top of my uh, middle finger. And you can see that I've made it fit so that it doesn't come past the first knuckle. And that's just how I like it. It, it wears really well this way. And I'm going to take my very hot, a little Aliso Mini, move one of these guys out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and just start on one side. And you can see I'm going to use my trolley needle or my finger stiletto to pull back the edge and start bringing my iron up into the project. And because these heat up, you can see why you want to be able to get your fingers out of the way all the way around. And I'm just going to rotate the piece. You can see I'm keeping my fingers off of the hot metal. And we're going to finish up a little bit of a last rotation there. And once I've gone all the way around, I have a pretty good one. I just want to go ahead and give it one more little press. Make sure that everything is drying out. You can see how on this one we didn't have quite a quarter of an inch seam allowance there and there. But we're okay. I think that's a decent amount. We can make this one work. And I'll just use my little finger stiletto to push that out of the way and bring the next one in. We'll do the same thing here. With our little mini, we are just going right around. And we're getting right over the top. really like the Aliso minis for this. I think it's so much easier than getting out your big iron. Less heat. And here in Tucson during the summer, I appreciate less heat. We've got enough of that going on outside. There we go. And let's do one more little turn. Oh, I'm liking how this one is working out too. So all the way around, you'll notice that all fabrics handle um, starch a little bit differently so some just lay down really well some you have to futz with just a little bit more depends on the fabric that's okay they all work and let's give that one one last little mush to make sure everything's staying in there good awesome now because of course these got really hot the last thing you want to do is just reach out and start taking them apart so let them sit for a few minutes. And this is why I tend to do like four or five at a time because these have cooled while I've been working on these with you. And when you're ready to pop them out, you can just go ahead and push your piece out of the center. And then with your fingernail, or if you don't have a long fingernail, use your finger stiletto to get inside there. Get underneath that little apple pop washer and then grab it out of the center. You can see your circle is formed beautifully. It's ready to stitch on your project. And you can make as many of these as you need. I like to store them in a little box while I'm waiting to go to my main project. Remember, pop them out. Pull the little washer out of the center. 
and your circle is beautiful and ready to go. So, apple pops, you know, I was skeptical, but I think they're absolutely wonderful. I'm definitely going to be using them for more projects in the future. I hope you check them out and see which set of the apple pops is right for you. How small do you want to go? You can see how tiny you can go. You can go down quite small. And how big do you want to go? Some of these are two inch circles on the inside, which is great. I love to have a two inch circle for a lot of things. And um, wow, I mean, so fun. So check out some of the projects that we just started doing with Apple Pops. You'll see one um, with the Summer Scrap Elimination for 2022. And you'll find the link in the description for the blog that we use for Apple Pops this time around. Don't forget, stitch happy and always have fun with your projects.